Hi friends, welcome back. So we're talking about the American consumer and there's a bit of slowdown. Uh, this is important to understanding our markets and our economy. So let's just jump right in. This is the headline here. American spending patterns are flashing a uh, warning of possible consumer led recession. And uh, there's some numbers out of this, which I want to show you guys. I think are interesting. Uh, coming from McKinsey, so this is one of the consulting firms here. And uh, they're talking about uh, consumers making a trade down. Uh, so essentially, um, you are uh, making different choices, right? So you're still spending, but making different choices. So for example, are you going to Bloomingdale's or Macy's department store, or are you going to Walmart? Um, that's essentially what we're talking about, right? So you're, you're still spending, but you're trading down. And uh, it's interesting, they actually give some specific numbers on this, on, on percentages. So remember, a lot of people are trading down and also to uh, how many people are, are cutting back or re reducing spending. So it says here, 37% of consumers uh, said they are uh, tended to reduce their spending on takeout meals, right? Uh, so on takeout, 35% um, said they intended to spend less at sit down. 30% uh, said uh, they're spending less on international and domestic flights. And 32% said they would spend less on alcohol. So that's an interesting question. And I pose that to you is, um, are you spending less on alcohol and flights? Now, these kind of things here though, I, I think um, reflects more the middle class, right? So lower class people aren't really like, changing their habits on international flights, right? They're not going anyway. It's more of this sort of the middle class that are thinking, okay, you know, maybe we're not gonna take that trip over to Europe, et cetera. Uh, maybe we're not gonna go out to, you know, Asia, Australia, or whatever you're gonna go, right? We're, we're just gonna go to locally. Maybe we're just gonna go to Florida this year. Um, or for example, you know, people are like, hey, you know, I, I, I really like, you know, getting that delivery, but you know what, we're just gonna drive to the grocery store and, and get food. And I can just tell you from, you know, our personal experience uh, yesterday, true story, uh, we were looking at to order a uh, burrito and tacos because actually um, here in Pusan, there's a really, really good uh, Mexican um, sort of, how can I say, not, not community, but just, um, what's right, what to call it, just a lot of really good uh, restaurants that, that have this kind of food. Um, and uh, I, I don't know exactly why uh, it's been trending lately. Um, that there isn't really a population of, of um, you know, Mexican people here. Just maybe it's Koreans have traveled to Mexico and, and like that kind of food, but um, basically, though, what I'm saying is that they, they raised the price recently. And so I, I literally decided just to go to the grocery store uh, and get it before. Uh, I think we paid like 15,000 won, which is not huge or anything, but they raised it to 17. And you're just like, I don't know, <laughs> you know, and, and I can go to the grocery store and get something for 10. Right. So that, that's kind of the, the trade offs that, that you have to make. Um, and I, I think also, too, this is interesting because. Um, if you're in the uh, you know upper class, you're still going international flights, you're still buying your luxury good, etc. Uh, lower class, you know, you're still struggling, and you know I'm just telling you how it is. And then the middle classes are the ones who, who are really thinking, okay, we're still spending, but we're, we're cutting back. But um, a lot of people are uh, trading down. Um, the other thing is too is is as well is um, uh, delinquency rates are going up. So this is uh, on your credit cards at commercial banks, and you can see it it is in an uptick. Um, the high, you know, in the recent uh, decades would be more like the um, financial crisis there. But I mean, we're, we're heading up. Um, moreover, people are cutting back on spending at the grocery store. Um, I can just tell you, do you guys, this, I always, you know, I always share the same thing, but, uh, you know, it's always good to share that we're all in the same boat. So for us, when we go to the grocery store, we buy what's on sale. <laughs> it is what it is. So, you know, are we having chicken, pork or, or beef for dinner? Well, it depends what's on sale. Right? Sometimes we eat duck, right? That goes on sale. Um, and actually duck's pretty good. My wife likes duck. Uh, she always says it's healthier than other meats. Um, you guys can let me know on that. Uh, for me, it, it's all good. I eat it all. Um, I like lamb quite a bit, but they don't have it that often in the grocery store. Uh, and, and then when they do, it's kind of expensive. And now what's crazy, and I don't talk about the lamb situation. Um, my understanding is like lamb is really cheap in, in Australia is, is my understanding. And so I don't know, because we get it, we, we get here in Korea, we get some uh, lamb from Australia, but I don't know, we, we don't. It's not like super cheap here, <laughs> so I don't know. Uh, you, you guys can try to explain that one to me. Um, but uh, in terms of grocery though, I guess in the USA, um, people are buying less items. So that's what this chart shows you. And yes, it, yes, it, it seems like a small downtick, right? But it is a downtick um, because, well, I think I to draw that a little better there. It is a downtick there, trust me there, you, I can see it there and you can see it. Um, and uh, it, it adds up o over time. Uh, moreover, this is actually a really interesting one for those of you um, who, uh, study economics and these kind of things. So this would be like a, a supply demand curve kind of thing, or actually not supply demand. This would be a price sensitivity curve. Um, so this is um, how you look at this. And this is a, a downward slope um, is when you increase price. So that's this side here, uh, sales decrease, right? Uh, when you uh, decrease price, sales increase, right? It's, it's pretty obvious, but 
um, you know, by how, what, what rates, et cetera. Um, all of these dots on this chart uh, depends on, on what uh, product uh, that you're talking about. So um, this is a real thing, right? Prices go up, people uh, sort of, you know, really question more if they wanna buy said thing. Um, the other thing is too as well is, is then it affects uh, stores like a Target or like a Kroger, right? So Target, we talked about this before on the channel, um, they have 2,000 stores that cut the prices on like 5,000 items. Kroger's trying to figure out to, to get more sales. And uh, this was actually an interesting thing. Um, they asked people, uh, what are the main reasons why uh, you have purchased less quantities? Uh, the most popular answer was prices have increased, right? Other people say, well, they're waiting for a sale. Uh, that's <laughs> that's our situation. I, I literally go to the grocery store. Uh, if it's on sale, I buy it. If it's not, I don't. <laughs> uh, economic reasons, uh, personal reasons, and uh, need less uh, than used to. So, um, you know, again, the most popular is, is price increase. And it's actually kind of funny, um, well, not that funny, but it, it's, uh, we'll just say, ironic. Uh, on June 22nd, uh, Wall Street Journal just did a, a, a related story to our, you know, burrito taco story. Just yesterday, we were looking at delivery and they they uh, increased, it, what it was is they increased the minimum amount you have to order. So before you had to order like 15, now you gotta order 17. So that, so, so actually when I told you before the 15, 17 thing, um, it, it's like to, to get it to, you know, above 17, you have to order that additional item. So then it ends up being like 21 or something. Oh, you guys know how that does minimum order. And then, um, I guess they raised the delivery fee on us too. I can't remember, uh, or, or, or what it is, is like, you have to order a certain amount to get the free delivery free. That that's what it is. And then they raise the delivery fees. So you, it's not really, it's just not worth it anymore. Um, and the basic gist of it is it's, you got the same problem. Um, this is actually New York and Seattle. What it is, I guess, New York city. They raise the, the the wages of, um, and this I guess a requirement of like I guess the Uber driver uh, who delivery to nineteen fifty six an hour, and then before uh, the minimum I, I guess was like five thirty nine, and um, you know obviously five thirty nine an hour is, is is much much too low, right? I mean I'll explain it to you, um, but nine fifty six is that too high or too low? Um, I'm not currently living in in these places at the moment, so no comment on that. I'll, I'll just say. New York's really expensive and, and you know, even $20 an hour may, may not be enough. Um, and then the issue is though, is that they're facing, you know, decreasing sales. And so this is actually a, a real problem. So if, if you, and this is in terms of like, you know, these kind of uh, businesses, if you decrease your salary, then where are you gonna find workers, right? Because workers need uh, a, a living wage in order to, to make ends meet and, and to, you know, wanna do your job. Um, if you increase salary, uh, then you need to figure out a way to, you know, pay for said workers. And so the likely you'll pass that cost on to uh, the consumer. And the, as a consumer, you're like, oh my God, and, you know, before I got like, you know, a, a decent pizza for, you know, a decent rate. And, but now you like upped it by 20% or whatever. I'm, I'm just not going to do anymore. I'm going to walk to the, walk to the pizza place. So it's not, and that would be an example of a trade down. So it's not that you stopped eating pizza in this example. It's just that you sort of traded off the, the luxury of having it delivered. You're just going to pick it up yourself. And um, moreover, um, this is not just a, a, a U.S. thing. It's happening worldwide, sort of the economic angst. Um, this was actually an article that just came out uh, June 22nd, 2022 from Bloomberg. It says here, China's spate of violence uh, prompts uh, outbursts of economic anxiety. Uh, and basically, um, people are, you know, more violent now in China. And I used to live in China. Um, it's, it's really, 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 really safe. Uh, I lived in uh, Shanghai, uh, Shenzhen. Uh, and Beijing, really, really safe. But uh, these days though, unfortunately, just the, the economic strains and, and these kind of things, there's, there's just more violence. And, and it's not, it, it's like I said, it, it's not unusual that people feel more anxiety when you know you have less money and, or maybe you lost your job, right? It's not unusual, it's just human nature. Um, this is saying here, it's interesting. Um, this is some quotes that they pulled from social media over in China. Uh, this is kind of like the equivalent of, of Twitter over there, it's called a Weibo. But it says here, um, the pressure of this economic environment is cascading down to everyone, right? Again, this is from a Chinese user, uh, who may be pushed to the brink by a slight change in circumstances. Don't provoke or bully others. You don't know where their limits are of outbursts are. Don't let yourself become the victim of economic climate. Another person's writing, when the economy is bad, social problems grow, people are becoming more uh, aggressive. And um, the thing that's so crazy uh, about our social media is, is you know, and I, and I tell you guys this stuff all the time is you have all, all these people who are like idolize someone like a Mr. Musk because, you know, things are bad in your neck of the woods and it's like, oh, you know, I want to be rich. So I want to be just like Mr. Musk. And 
And uh, if you want to be like Mr. Musk, um, you have lots of secret children. So <laughs> true story, June 2nd, 2020 tour. I, I think Musk now has at least, I, I say at least, because he may have a whole bunch we don't know about, uh, at least 11 kids now. So he had a, a third kid, I guess, uh, with an employee, uh, uh, Neuralink. Um, you know, my, my personal opinion of, of this stuff is I, I think it's all, all crazy. Um, yeah, he, he can afford it. He's got plenty of money to that, but you know, is he going to be a, a, a seriously a good father to all 11 kids? I, I doubt that. And anyone who, you know, knows anything about this stuff, I mean, just having one kid is, is a handful. Uh, imagine two or three, right? But then you get to like 11 kids. Oh my God. <laughs> it, there's, there's no way. And, um, you know, he, he preaches all the time that y'all need to have kids all the time, et cetera. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, I'm bringing this stuff up with the must stuff because he's also the same guy who's telling you that, you know, they're going to make a whole bunch of money with AI and everyone's going to be rich, et cetera. And um, in fact, um, people do go along with it, meaning Dell, a super micro. So I guess uh, they're building, you know, servers and, and Musk is raising money for his XAI. He got like six billion on this thing. And um, the whole promise is, you know, we're going to be able to have all these great products in AI and we're going to sell it to all these, you know, consumers and we're going to get all these people to subscribe to Twitter for eight bucks a month or whatever. And that's why, you know, guys, like, why are we talking about American consumer? Well, you know, the, the market isn't like isolated. And I know sometimes it feels like it is that it's isolated from the economy or the consumer that it's just, you know, just a bunch of numbers on the screen. But ultimately, these companies need to make money and to make money, you got to sell stuff to, to people. Right. And so this is sort of why you, you check, like, you know, for must fans stuff like that, do they have the money uh, to pay that eight bucks a month or whatever? Right? And how many of these people are there going to be out there? And so is this investment in these servers going to be worth it? Or, for example, um, are companies really going to be, you know, investing in and in, in subscribing to all their services for whatever AI for all their employees? Right. So that's going to be the question. Uh, my personal opinion stuff is, is it's all overhyped. And um, this is real, though. Um, if you watch Wall Street and stuff like that, uh, you know, on TV, they'll just tell you everything is awesome. And AI is the next was a third uh, revolution or something like that, as, as they'll say. And, you know, the Dan Ives guy in the pink suit, <laughs> he really does wear pink suits. We'll tell you how this we're just getting started in AI play. Um, I, I'm showing you this article because this is an important to understand. Like like there's a lot of corruption in, in this in this finance space. Uh, so Citigroup, uh, JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, Bank of America. Um, I, I guess they got hit by regulators because uh, they, they got essentially too many derivative products and, and basically what's going on is um, they did a test and uh, if there's any sort of catastrophe or economic meltdown, uh, I guess all of these banks, just the way they have their things structured, it would be really, really uh, slow or difficult for them to unwind uh, all their products. So um, when, when I was thinking about this and this came out on June 21st, um, this is very similar to the situation in Margin Call. And um, if you haven't seen this movie, please check it out. It, it'll make more sense. but. Uh, basically, you know, these people will tell you anything in, in, in public and, and lie to your face. Uh, but behind closed doors, they're, they're doing the best they can to, to, you know, get themselves out of a tough situation. But it takes time, right, the way they have things structured. Uh, moreover, uh, talking about sort of like our, our structure of our system. I mentioned this from time to time, but um, I think it should be probably talked about uh, uh, much more. Um, this is our, our problem with uh, the U.S. GDP and, and debt. And uh, there was an interesting chart that um, is this is U.S. federal debt held by investors as a percentage of, of GDP. Uh, so basically, the government is, is, is spending more than uh, than they take in, right? And so what you got to do to keep your um, you know system going, uh, keep the spending flowing, I guess, is um, is you got to issue bonds and get people to, to essentially give you money. <laughs> essentially, what it is, uh, and and you're selling debt. And um, uh, what it is right now at the moment, I guess the projections are it's going to be, um, again, this is your, your U.S. debt to uh, GDP. It's going to be higher uh, than what it was during World War II, right? Remember, World War II was all about war bonds and that kind of stuff. So um, it's, it's historically high levels, which is, which is nuts. Uh, I don't think this is sustainable. Um, I, I, I mean... You know, how, how are we going to get our, how are we going to get out of this uh, kind of uh, scenario? Um, you know, I, I guess we just keep printing more money, but then you get the, the problem with inflation. So this is a, a really important chart to look at. So I'm pulling it up. And, you know, one of the things I, I, I will say, though, that uh, will never go out of business is, um, you know, these kind of people, <laughs> uh, Kim Jong-un and Putin. And, uh, you know, what are these people doing? Well, they're buying armored cars. True story. This is the headline. Um, Vladimir Putin gifted North Korean leader Kim Jong-un a second 
luxury armored limo. Now, for those of us, right, um, we probably don't need an armored limo in, in this sense, right? No one's out to, to hurt me <laughs> like this, but you know, if you're these kind of people, right, when you go to see your mistress, there's always someone gunning for you. Um, for you and, and you know, for me, our armor little is, is just keeping a cool head and, and playing smart. Um, and, and this particular economy that, that we live in, you know, my, my personal opinion and stuff is don't overextend yourself because you just don't know when, when the slowdown's really going to hit. Um, you know, we know there's a, a meltdown in China. I mentioned that several times. And someone wrote in the comments the other day, I was like, oh, you know, we hear about this stuff all the time. It doesn't affect me at all. And, and I, it, it's, it's, it's just not true, guys. Um, we're, we're all connected. Um, for example, let's say you work for whatever company, uh, we'll use the word example of Apple. A lot of people work for Apple, right? Or related businesses, be it shipping. Let's say you work for a shipping company that ships iPhones to China. Uh, if people in, in China don't have any money to buy your iPhones, uh, no money for Apple and no money for people who work in, in the shipping industry, right? UPS, FedEx, et cetera, or in the cargo industry, right? I, I just don't want you to guys think like, why are we talking about other countries? Because we're all connected. Or same way if Americans, you know, don't have money to go to the grocery store and, you, and you're like a manager at Kroger, right? Something like that. You'll you'll know it from seeing the numbers, right? The only people who make money these days, I guess, are people who sell armored cars <laughs> to, to dictators. But um, uh, your armored car, though, is, is knowledge of understanding the system, right? Um, keeping a cool head, right? Being financially sound. Um, these kind of things are essentially in this uh, day and age is just, I, I think the big one right now is don't overextend yourself. Uh, moreover, uh, make sure your career is secure. I always mention that stuff all the time. How do you do that, right? You, you have skills that, that people need. Uh, you make it so that you're indispensable. Uh, you make sure that people like you. Um, spend time with your coworkers and, you know, just say hello to them, say goodbye to them, be polite, these kind of things, like be pleasant. Uh, that kind of simple stuff, some people don't do. They, 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 they treat work like I just, I show up, clock in, clock out, and they don't really talk to anyone. And it's not really... A great strategy if you want long-term success uh, because think of it this way and, and 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 you don't don't just be nice to be fake nice just be nice because because you know uh, learn to 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 make relationships with other people um, but just think of it this way like you know if, if you're in a situation where a particular company was example tesla recently you know fired a bunch of workers and your manager has you know 10 people to choose from uh, and you know must says you got to cut four right uh, you want a good relationship with your manager. I'm not saying anything crazy. You want to have good skills that like, well, you know, manager's like, it looks at the 10 people and you're going to be the first person that he's definitely going to uh, pick to keep, right? He's like, well, that one's untouchable. I, I, I can't live without that person, right? And, and, and that's sort of, sort of how you secure your future. And then after that, you, you, you manage your money well, you know, you, you save, you invest, these kind of things, sort of stuff we talk about on the, on the time in the channel. Um, I, I try to tell you the truth about this stuff, guys, and, and, and keep you sort of grounded and this is this is a reality um you know when you essentially not your armored vehicle in the sense of you know someone's gonna shoot at you but when you have your armored vehicle uh, in sense of like you know a, a good sound financial and, and and good relationship with people you're just not worried you go anywhere and and, and you're just not worried because you got you got your armor so whatever that armor is for you it's going to be different um you know for everyone in, in, in your particular situation but uh, when you have that you feel safe and and everything's going great so I um, want to keep you guys informed all the time. I do appreciate uh, you watching and tuning in, and I'll catch you all in the next video.